Okay, thank you, Dan D'Agostino, uh, for joining us today at Soundstage Talks. Um, I'm wondering, I wanted to start off by asking you uh, how the relentless uh, flagship design, whether it has opened some opportunities for the in, uh, lower, end, lower, lower models in terms of the DNA to carry across? Well, it really didn't start out that way because we had some products already selling. Um, but when we built the Relentless and we finally got it working the way we wanted, we realized that there were some sonic benefits that we could add to some of the existing products. And uh, the biggest recipient of that is the uh, uh, Momentum MXV. That has a, a, a relentless output stage in it, some derivative of it. And uh, that and uh, some tweaks to the driver board has given us a sound that sounds very similar to a Relentless. Sure. Of course, it doesn't sound the same, but it's very close. It's very close that simile. And it's very pleasant to listen to when you listen to a Relentless and then go to a Momentum and you see that there's still things to have, but there's also a lot of things that a product that's, that's significantly smaller and less costly can sound. Sure. Um, I, I found a comment you made earlier quite interesting where you say that uh, you're no longer uh, relentlessly, pardon the pun, chasing uh, uh, measurements and uh, high, you know high level of refinement in the measurements, but you're more interested in the uh, end result and the sound that the amplifiers uh, make. So, uh, is there a, a listening panel, or how do you how, how many listening sessions? How do you how do you go about fine tuning it to the target level of sound quality? Well, you know, for me, I just keep on working the circuits until I get them so that I'm really satisfied with the results. And as you know, your ear doesn't instantaneous pick up anomalies in sound. So it takes quite a while to listen. You listen and you listen and you listen. And if you start hearing a particular tonality that always comes through, no matter what kind of music you play, then you can't use that circuit. That circuit has to go. And as soon as you realize that, then you go make changes to prevent that from happening. I mean, I've had some evaluation. I've had some, some other people's equipment, for instance, like DAX and front ends that I've listened to because I'm always keenly interested in DAC technology. And as soon as I hear something, I play like a voice or an aftertone and I start hearing it over and over again, then I dismiss the product. Right. I mean, I, I, I use a, a, a DCS DAC and I never, I never hear that, right. which is what makes me happy with it. Sure. Uh, but it's very, uh, you have to be disciplined to really make an improvement on something you're doing because it's, uh, you, you want to turn it and you changed it and you listen and you hear the difference. So, oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. But until you sit down for a week or two of listening to it, and then you can say, well, you know, it's still great, or I hear this in it, and then you have to go change it. Sure. So it's a, it's a, it's a doing the relentless is really, really, really a difficult project. I mean, it really took us a year to get it to a point where we wanted to build it. Sure. Uh, and going down to the momentum was, uh, was really just a, a labor of love because, you know, the, the momentum was my first product in this company and I, I really love it. I love the way it looks. I love, and, I, and every time I can put an improvement on it, it makes me happy. Sure. And when we did the MXV, it's a significant improvement. It's just a wonderful addition. Fantastic, so just a little bit more on the listening test because obviously that's what we hear <laughs> as, a, as a consumer of the, of the products. Is are the listening test carried in uh, various environments under different system situations, or how do you go about it? Well, I'll, I'll tell you how I go about it. Once I get something that I like, mm -hmm. then I invite other people to hear it mm -hmm. and see what they think, sure. because their initial impression is important to me. Right. You know, it's not it's not the long term impression because I I've already determined that it doesn't have any anomalies in its sound structure, but when a, new person sits and listens, they hear it. I said, they've listened to two or three pieces. So what do you think? Oh, I really like it. Or, uh, you know, it doesn't do anything for me. 
both of those things are very important to me. If it doesn't do anything for you, then you're not hearing what I'm hearing, or you're hearing, you're not hearing what you want to hear in the in in the the equipment. Sure. And that and that's something that I want to research because not everybody hears the same. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's an interesting point. Yeah. Because uh, we all hear differently, and we all have different uh, biases and tastes. Right. So yeah. Yeah, but we do all have a baseline. Yeah. We know what a trombone sounds like. Exactly. We know what a trumpet sounds like. We know what a violin sounds like. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it may sound differently to me. It may have a little different pitch than to you. Uh, the strings may be a certain texture for me, differently from you. But still, at the end of the day, how does it really compare to a real violin? Yeah. And, in, you know, just a solo violin with the right system could sound very convincing. Of course, yes. Yeah. Okay, I want to move on to... A question on, on other products that uh, uh, D'Agostino uh, is, is producing as a company. Um, so obviously, pre-amplification circuits are very, very different to amplification yes. circuits. Yeah. So what, what have you done on the in terms of, of circuit design for the pre-amplifiers? Well, what we're always looking for in preamps is neutrality. So I do when I do a new preamp circuit, I do a unity gain and I insert it in between what I'm listening to. And if I hear a difference, then it's not good. Right. So that, that's what I'm looking for. And then once I get that, that neutrality, then I can build upon it. Sure. So it's a, like a straight wire with gain, but yeah. purely with... Yeah, uh, I mean, whatever your system is, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, if you insert it in there, did it change it? Yes. And if it changed it as a preamp, it's no good. Sure. Okay. I suppose there's also added challenges with that because your preamps include uh, streaming uh, functions and uh, that's, cha that's constantly changing. Yeah. Also, DAC technology uh, is, constantly is constantly changing. changing. Yeah, yeah. So do you, have you found that you've needed to redesign part of the circuits in order to accept those new uh, uh, changes in the... In yeah, the well, you know, for me, I, I put enough margin in those circuits so they can handle almost anything. Sure. I mean, you have, you have preamps that have tremendous input overloads and very wide bandwidth, uh, high impedances that are not affected by, by source components. So uh, once you get that down, then you have very little outside inter interference on how that circuit operates. Sure. Okay, is there a desire for uh, D'Agostino Master Systems to develop uh, acoustic products, speakers? No, no. We, we, we are not in the speaker market and we are not going to be. Sure, okay, interesting. Um, what, what, uh, you, we spoke earlier about a new product uh, that you've been hinting about. Can you yeah. tell me a little bit about that? Well, we're working on a uh, uh, Momentum Integrated uh, 2023. Uh, we made it before, we sold them out, and we wanted to make some changes in a new design because we think it's a product that people would like right now, and particularly with all our new uh, developed streaming technology and our DAC technology that we've developed for internally in the preamp and our new sonic circuits. Mm -hmm. I think that we can make a really compelling product in that category. And that's why we're working on it. Sure. What sorts of features will be included in that? Well, that? you'll have uh, direct select digital DAC inputs. You'll have streaming. You'll have the same ability uh, preamp wise as the uh, HD. You'll have the same circuitry there and you'll have the same output stage as the MXB. Okay. So you'll have that relentless sound. You'll have a great preamp input stage that sounds great and all built into one box. Wow, that's a, that with a, be a beautiful very, With a beautiful look. Very interesting product. Uh, what about a phono stage? Would, is there a, is, would it be a modular design where yes, you Yes, there will also phono be stage? a phono stage for that. Right. We developed a, we're developing a special phono stage to go in there, so that'll be part of it. And a headphone stage? And a headphone stage will be included in it. Okay, that's terrific. So it's a fairly 
widely. Yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna, I, I wanna cover all the bases. Yes. And I wanna make it so people can enjoy it. Yeah. So when can uh, consumers expect that to, is it first well, we're, half we're of trying, We're trying the, the uh, uh, probably April, May of, of next year. Wow, okay, we yeah. look forward to that. Yeah, I mean, we're building it right now. Sure. And after we build it and we get all the kinks out of it, then we'll do another version of it, of the boards, another layout, and then if that turns out right, then it'll meet its time frame, because it's it's three or four months to get metal yes. made. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just lastly, if you had to summarize a, a company ethos for Dagasino, what what would you say that would be, and and what's what are the philosophies that that uh, carry the company? I think, first of all, design integrity, beauty in design musicality of our components, wide, wide acceptance of our aesthetic choices and um, uh, uh, our musical abilities for, for our company are the most important thing. So, Terrific. Okay, thank you very much, Dan D'Agostino. Thank you. Thank you.